What is up everybody? It's your boy Sully the Great One back at it again and this time I have a very special guest. As you can see, Keysar lost a little bit of weight, <laughs> got a little bit better looking and transformed into Godsend 87. Hey, oh, it's up, great buddy? to hear be here, man. Thanks for having me, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Oh man, he's our. I'm sorry, but I'm just I'm just playing around with you. You're missing out. Oh, really? It's all right. He's <laughs> he's out there in the wilderness. Ooh. I don't know what he's Lumber, doing. Lumberbag, uh, lumberjack, he's our. Oh. So first things first, God said, I want yes, to talk sir. to you a little bit about some of the games that you're playing right now. What what have you tried? Um, what have you bought that you might be disappointed in? And, and what? Hmm. What has uh, recently been some fun? Yeah, yeah. i um, been playing a lot right now, actually, just kind of being, you know, diverse. There's a lot of things coming out, which is great. We're in kind of a, a great, you know, time. There's a lot of content for gaming. Um, the most recent one that I got to try out, actually twice, um, closed beta and then what just was live for open beta was Division 2. Yeah. Um, really liked it, to be honest really? with you. Um, See, I was never a fan of the first one. Like, I was so hyped. And then, sure. like, we played the first one. It was so, like, not what it was supposed to be. Sure. It felt like a complete disaster. And I feel like, you know, with those big box titles and, you know, the whole Tom Clancy deal, like, they haven't been the same. I just figured it's a bunch of pile of crap. You know, here's the thing. Like, it follows a lot of the same suit as far as gunplay and yeah. how kind of the mechanics of the game work in that regard. So if you really did not like uh, Division 1, you won't like Division 2. It's just the, the reality of it. Um, Note it. Will yeah. not play. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste money. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about the one that recently just came out. That is high action, violence, speed, momentum, like Dr. Disrespect says. <laughs> what game have you been playing recently? It's just, it's just a stay <laughs> <laughs> Uh Devil May Cry 5. It is awesome. It's such a good game. It's really been a fresh, uh, for, you know, breath of fresh air sure. with a lot of some of the disappointment with some of the games I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, the thing that I really like about it, and Capcom has really been on a roll as a whole, yeah. um, but they really kind of married. This is It's three separate characters that you play in this game. Which at first I was a little interested and worried about of like, man, I want to get like super invested into one character and like progress through the story and see how it goes. They did a great job with actually rolling between the three different character storylines, um, mixing them together so it's not just like a hard break between That's one and the, the next. Yeah. Um, beautiful game again, gory as all get out, high action. Gee. Um, the thing I love, though, is the different combos that you can pull out. I mean, literally, there's a, there's a point where you can ride a motorcycle and break it in two and start, like, doing damage. Dude, and that's it's I, awesome. So... <laughs> I, I don't know if you, you caught when uh, a couple episodes ago, but I said Kingdom Hearts was a absolutely waste of money. It was like a long cut scene, I felt sure, like. Sure, sure, sure. So I have Kingdom Hearts over here that I'm still going to take back. <laughs> I'm probably going to try to get some type of money for it, and i got to get Devil May Cry 5 ASAP. It's, you will love it. It's ASAP. great. Um, the thing that they're doing great, and something that Capcom's been really owning, is free DLC. Um, so their their new DLC is coming out here fairly quick, and That's it's awesome. going to be completely free, which is awesome. Um, and then again, they're coming back to back off a huge release, so the re-release of Resident Evil Two. Yeah, dude, which is a beautiful game, amazing. And really, that's like what horror games should be. Now, yes. I, I get it. We played, uh, you know, the the recent Resident Evil game where you're in the house. Yeah, whatnot. seven. Yeah, re, uh, Resident Evil Seven, yep. and and that was terrifying. But now <laughs> the, Resident Evil Two coming out. It's remastered, it's completely yep. updated with brand new graphics, yep. and it's everything a classic Resident Evil game should be. Totally. It's, it's funny, like like you just mentioned, I yeah. feel like we get into these like Michael Bay moments with content where like it has to be like so over the top for yeah. us to like enjoy, and the same thing with <coughs> horror, right? Yeah, but, <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but with this, it totally is that old school, like, zombies aren't running after you. Like, they're yeah. just stumbling down the hallway, but uh, it's low. True. But they're creepy looking. Yeah. Creepy looking. Yeah. Uh, but low ammo reserve. you got to do puzzles on the fly. You're being chased uh, the, pretty much the majority of the game. Um, so it's this mix of, like, good puzzle, old school gameplay, um, just great satisfying content. That's awesome. The dismemberment's, like, on another level. I mean, that's awesome. dude, you can literally, like, cut them in half, break off arms. It's it's pretty intense. But that's great. it is RE2, just fully redone from the ground up. It's dope. That's supposed to be legit. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Can we check again? <laughs> you gotta do the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Blizzard layoffs that we talked about not too long ago. I recently did a video that you can find like up here somewhere. It's going to be up here when I, when I edit this video. But uh, I talked about the three things that Blizzard can do to fix their company. Uh, I mean, one of the things I did touch on was how they did lay off some people. 
more news came about that that 209 of the 800 employees that were let go um, were on the blizzard side so 209 so it looks like majority of the layoffs were on the activision side which makes a little bit more sense they're a little bit more of the um side that's really taking the most hit i mean blizzard has a huge fan base um they have loyal you know loyal gamers yeah. um and you, yeah overwatch the overwatch league doing well world of warcraft mm -hmm. is doing okay um, nice starcraft <laughs> starcraft i mean i mentioned that starcraft there haven't been much attention they're yeah. ruining diablo uh, um mobile? they, they get yeah. yeah. right come on they canceled uh, Heroes of the Storm, which is fine. They weren't going to be able to catch up with the Dotas and the League of Legends of yeah, the world. Yeah. And then Hearthstone's just, you, you just got to spend a shit ton of money sure. to get a bunch of cards, and everybody plays the same decks, yeah, and it's yeah. like a coin flip. <laughs> so no one really likes that game Not anymore. Not used to be. All right? So it, it's it's pretty interesting. that It looks like it, it appears that the a lot of the Hurts, not necessarily on the Blizzard side, but more on the Activision side, yeah. which is still pretty interesting. Sure. I think... You know their money makers are going to be more on the Blizzard side, so you know the only thing Activision really has going for it is Call of Duty. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I think what they need to do is, and I mentioned this in the video, and you guys can get more. I'll link it as well in the description below. Um, but they need to one get rid of uh, you know all those games that are not doing well yeah. and stick with the top three, which are going to be Call of Duty. Um, World of Warcraft and Overwatch and put all those other developers behind it to make those games even more richer. Yeah. Um, two, uh, and I'll mention this a little bit later when we talk about Battle Royales, but making Overwatch free to play and giving it a Battle Royale mode. Yeah, I, I honestly think um, they can do it better than Apex. Like, right? I mean, that's what Apex is right yeah. now is special, unique characters yep. with this, you know, a, a squad of three, which, I mean, can be replicated and done better with yeah. Overwatch. Well, and then even just looking at the total, like, character amount, too, within Overwatch, yeah. like, there's so much more synergy that you can do than what's current. And, I mean, again, Apex is A, free, which is amazing, yeah. and then B, it's pretty new. So, yeah. I, mean, I get it. It's going to come with time. But I think something that's, you know, well-established already could... True really do well yeah and the third thing i'm gonna let you guys click on the link below to find that out i don't want to give everything away here but yeah so it, it appears that a lot of the the frustrations and the layoffs came from the activision side rather yeah. than the blizzard yeah. which is kind of good to hear if you're a blizzard fan yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I think they uh, it's one company right so they still have to come together they still got to figure mm -hmm. it out Let's go into the final topic of the video and the main reason why I brought you here today. Yes, sir. You got the shirt on. Yeah. You're a huge Destiny 2 guy, yes, Destiny 1 guy, Bungie guy. <laughs> I don't know why, um, but talk to us a little bit about the split. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about the most recent update and sure. how things have been going. How, how's, the, how's the game been? I mean, here's the thing. I, I definitely i am a diehard you know, Destiny fan. Um, I love Bungie as a whole. It's something that I've been through it with the good and the bad, and I'm not naive to the fact that it's not a perfect game, and it, it never will be. It's it's one of those things that with that you know high you know view and priority of like a social game like that, yeah. which they really kind of blend the lines of a first person and MMO. Sure, they're always going to have such a higher demand for standards from your consumer base, and you're never going to make people happy. And it's funny because looking at some of it, it's so unrealistic. Some of the things that we want, like, and we've seen it with them, and I'll get into it in a little bit, but. Um, you know, D1 as a whole, you know, it was a great game, D, other than there was no story, but yeah. uh, rolled into D2, there's a lot of issues that rolled through the past, you know, Osiris and Warmind DLCs were pretty crappy, to be honest with you, and was a kind of a tipping point where you saw a lot of people drop off from a, a player base for sure. that game. Um, Forsaken was a saving grace, um, and when that came out, we had the story, we had so much more to do, tons of guns to go after, um, it really felt like the, what Bungie was back in almost like the Halo days, like... It was good. It was really, really good. The glory days of Bungie. Yeah, agreed. And so that that really kind of brought some lifeblood into the situation in the series. Um, and then a lot of eyes were on them to really kind of back that up with their annual season pass. Sure. Where people started to get upset is they, they dropped the Black Armory or Black Forge, you know, armor, uh, you know, season, which was the first drop. And essentially, it put things at such a high end game, which kind of what they talked about anyways, but people were expecting to hop on day one and actually play this content. Sure. But things were so higher, like leveled, even for myself, who has been max level since, you know, the end of, you know, D2 and right. into the season, I was ready for it. We even had to grind for a good week to be able to even play some of these forges, which for me, it's cool because it gives you, again, something to drive right. for. But for the new player that's coming in, that's maybe hyped up again on this Destiny sure. piece. Yeah, right? You hop in ready to play, you can't. Yeah, and it's going to be months and months and months before you can even attempt anything like that, which got a lot of backlash. Yeah, and, and 
you know, right now with the Battle Royale scene, like, you have to grind, you have to con constantly play that game to keep up with the meta because yeah. they, they nerf guns, they change guns out, yeah. they change momentum out. But those games are so quick, so high, like, everybody's on the same playing field yep. at once. Yep. It's kind of hard to, to put that much effort into a game like Destiny sure. because you will literally have to not do anything else. You have to actually physically grind. You have to do all these other things just to maintain to be even relevant. And then, like yourself, you put more hours into this game than oh, everybody else. Yeah, probably you, even still, about. <laughs> you still have to play a whole number yeah. week before you even play the, the, yep. the, the thing. Like, yep. I don't have time for that. Yeah, no, and, and a lot of people didn't. And it really kind of drove a, you know, kind of a wedge in between, okay, is this really what it's going to be? Right. And then... The Holy Grail happened, which is the Bungie Activision splits, which then the heavens opened up. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of Infinite angel. <laughs> Anyways, oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> it's all good, bud. Oh, look at the peacock. Oh, 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 can I touch it? Zoom in. Oh, 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 look at that. Look at that. That's a little weird. I love it. Well, I'm going to get into it. So, uh, Season of the Drifter. Uh, this just dropped, and isn't any good? It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and the one thing that I like the most about it yeah. is uh, when you get to the actual tower, so keep in mind, if you're playing the game from day one, you still have to reach level 20 and you have to get sure. to the tower, which again, it's getting through the campaign as you should play when you first get a game, right? At that point, you can talk to the Drifter, which is an NPC in that tower itself, and he's gonna give you a series of bounties that actually get you up to power level 640, which mind you, before season the Drifter dropped, 650 was max. So really, you, if you were to jump in and play, you actually could get in a couple hours into gameplay and you could be at the point where you can play everything. So all the season pass content you can play, all the raids that have been released you can play. Um, there's a lot more activities now that are matchmaking. So even if you don't have a big group of friends to play with, you can jump in and enjoy some of this content, which is really cool. So first and foremost, that alone I think is just fantastic to really kind of get the player base back into playing this game. I think it's pretty cool. At least giving them the, the idea of, hey, maybe I'll check it out. Sure. Um, the other thing that they did, the whole season's really kind of geared around Gambit, which is this PvE, PvP game mode, um, where you're really going in, killing a bunch of enemies, trying to race to you know spawn a boss, right. and kill that boss first. Okay. The inter interesting part is you actually can drop in a player um, as an invader, which just kind of brings in that competitive PvP scene. Um, to really kind of wreak you know havoc to players that are on the other side so it's this back and forth game of dropping moats and killing each other and it's actually a lot of fun yeah that sounds pretty pretty entertaining it's pretty cool the changes that they did though which is nice gambit um was a three round piece if you went to like a tiebreaker sure. round the problem is each round's pretty lengthy so it was a, a pretty good time sink to play a match where you talk about like battle royales which is you know you could play 10 seconds in a match and die or you could play the full round but even still i mean you know 15 minutes into a match you're pretty much yeah. wrapped up you know, this one kind of took it a little bit further than that if you got to a team that you played that was good and you're in that third round. What they changed, though, is that now third round, the tiebreaker round, is just an immediate boss spawn. So it's just, you better hope you got your stuff and the right things in play and you just crack on to try and kill the boss first. So it made the time frame to play Gamut a lot shorter, um, which is really cool. It really cool. makes it a lot of fun. and changes the dynamics of how you're going to play and what supers you're going to hold back and all that right. kind of stuff, which is dope. Um, and then what was new was the addition of Gambit Prime. So this is a whole nother, you know, it is Gambit, but a new game mode. It's just a one-rounder. Um, it's really kind of the comp of Gambits, if you will. Um, and the goal of this whole setup is to get through the rounds like you normally would with dropping moats, but you actually can like steal moats from the other team now, so it's a lot more fast-paced and competitive than what it was. Um, and what happens is when you play this game mode, you get these synths. Um, what they do is they're all geared towards four different armor sets. Um, one's an invader set, which obviously you're invading the other team, and they give you perks on those armors. One for, it's called the Reaper, which you're killing big enemies on the map. Um, one's called the Century, where you can like mark in, incoming invaders and other things on the map to help do more damage. And then the Collector, which is all his goal is to just gather all the moats that people are getting from killing enemies, and you're baking those moats to drop other, you know, these ascendant uh, deals on the other end. So okay. that's kind of the flow. That's but what they do cool. now is when you finish that mode, you get your sense. You can actually combine them into a moat yourself and take it to a new game mode called the Reckoning. Um, what this is is a horde-based PVE game mode um, and a new, a new area that we haven't been. Um, there's been some stuff in Trials, but that's kind of been discontinued. But um, anyways, you go through in this time-based series to kind of break down a bunch of enemies and uh, go through this whole piece. And once you beat it, you get some cool new gear. And that, then at that point, you take that charge gear back into Gambit, which now makes you more powerful. So it's just kind of this cool loop that they do um, mm. between Gambit Prime and Reckoning, which has been pretty cool. Um, and that's pretty much that setup. 
Um, they're doing a lot here, so I, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, keep it rolling. But it's good stuff. So essentially what they're doing now is at, they're breaking it up to three tiers. So tier one dropped in, on launch of the actual you know season of the Drifter. Uh, tier two actually dropped this Friday. Um, so we've been trying to grind through, and it's been it's really challenging because they've been yeah. proud of the light level a little bit to beat it. Um, and it's different. So tier one, you go through, you, you beat a bunch of enemies. Tier two is essentially you're going along this long bridge and kind of playing king of the hill. So you got to stay on a single point and kind of hold off everything that's coming at you. Damn, and then that's you, pretty it's, intense. It's dope. And then you end up in like this new like boss realm where you fight these like two giant ascendant like knights with axes, and it's really hard and awesome. But um, so that's really cool. Tier three, that's next Friday, so that's coming up. So we'll have more to talk about there. Um, but yeah, really excited for what's coming. Um, you also have the Thorn uh, quest that's coming out, which is an exotic hand, hand, hand cannon from D1 that's coming back over. Um, so that hits on Tuesday. That's on the 12th. Um, and this is the one of my biggest excitements with what's coming. So what they're doing is called the Allegiance Quest. Um, they really are at this point letting you pick between do you roll with the Vanguard, uh, which is who you've been kind of going with the entire time, or this Drifter guy who's been really, you don't know his agenda. He's kind of shady. Um, there's a lot of... Drifter sounds like yeah, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, buddy. But they're really kind of coming to the point now where your decisions in this quest actually affect future content. So you're almost kind of setting the path between like a good guardian and a dark guardian. And that's really everybody, what everybody wanted from yeah. Destiny, yeah. right there. Like the ability, your choices dictate what the the actual story yeah. will be for you. Yep, which is huge. And so they've already kind of hinted at what D three may become is the fact that they really have this rift and division between like guardians and dark guardians, and your player choice that it just opens up a world of opportunity of what they can do with the narrative. Um, and this is really the first shot of that. So not only is it just your decisions matter, like you get different gear for playing whatever side that you're doing, um, as well as guns. So even when you meet each other back in the Crucible for that PvP event, what your choices, again, even matter in that regard because yeah. you might have something that's like super OP that other people don't have because they made a different choice. So I'm excited. So all in all, man, that's some of the things that are happening, what's kind of coming out, things that got me excited, um, especially that, you know, this is really the first content drop that's just been yeah. just Bungie yeah. and they've knocked it out of the park, so... Wow. Which is which is huge. I mean, uh, you know, that's always exciting to, to, to see and to hear from a game company that, you know, was so, so big growing up yeah. for us. And then they got locked down with Activision and the way they were doing things. And it just felt like, again, another big time studio with a lot of hype behind a game. Yeah. And it was a super uh, underperforming. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say failure because it was still entertaining. Sure. But super under, underperforming. It was what we thought yeah. when, when it first released. Yeah. And now it's getting back to its roots, you yeah. know, which is really, really exciting. Yep. So so I love it. I'm, this, that, that's what I got, man. I'm excited for uh, what's to come. Go Indeed. Bungo. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for gaming this week. I am a Sully the Great One, Godson87. Hey, thank hey. you for coming through. It was yeah, fantastic. Man, thank you for me, man. Hopefully, we can have you on here more. <laughs> Definitely more entertaining than Keys are, <laughs> as always. Um, but before you go, let's play a game of Smash, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. Oh, yeah. Woo.